Our first speaker today is the Regional Economic Development President and CEO of the Northwest Indiana Forum, Mark Mazel. Mark, if you could come up, and I'm going to give you some background information on Mark. Just to give you um, some, it, some background on how Mark fits into our equation. Um, he is uh, a regional business, or, he's focused on regional business organization, creating high paying jobs while also enhancing the environment. He uh, worked at the law firm of Krieg DeVault, and as he did that, he became president of the Northern Indiana Public Service Company, NIPSCO, and several smaller companies owned by the company NISource, the parent company, which is a Fortune 500 company. And uh, combined, these companies had an annual revenue over $2 billion. So Mark knows a little bit about business. And I would go on to say he's just affiliated with so many different industry leaders, from Edison Electric to American Gas to, to the National Petroleum Council. He gives back to the community, and that's why he's part of Ready NWI, from state workforce uh, innovations to the Ivy Tech Foundation Board to being a school board member in Valparaiso. Um, he just brings a lot to the table. He's been honored with the Sagamore of the Wabash, and uh, we just are so proud to have him on our team. And he's going to share with you some real enlightening stories of how we can make a difference in our community with our business leaders. So Mark, we welcome you. Thanks so much. Thanks, Peggy, as you can tell, is just terrific. She does a fabulous job. We are very excited as a business community to work with individuals like Peggy. Part of what makes Ready Northwest Indiana such a great program is that each of us understands what it is that we know and what it is that we're capable of dealing with and in what are the areas where we need help. Again, as Peggy pointed out, what I am is just an old business guy. I've been around for a while and done a few things. I can, in fact, share with you some perspectives on what employers are looking for, what it is that we need in a workforce for that give or take 40 years that an individual spends in their professional career. On the other hand, what I cannot do is tell you how do you prepare that individual to get there. I am not an educator. You all are, and what that makes this all about is such an exciting moment when we can, can talk about what it is that we're going to need in individuals as they leave the work that you're doing. And we are so thankful that you have committed the time this morning to be here. We're so thankful that, that Peggy, that Eric Ban, a number of other superintendents that I've seen this morning, I know Tony Lux was walking in, that we have all pulled together in ways that I think have developed a really exciting program. Well, my particular role this morning is simply to share with you that employer perspective, what it is that we see as business people what it is that's coming in the future, and frankly, it is jobs, jobs, jobs. I probably ought to take just a quick minute and explain a little bit about the Northwest Indiana Forum, uh, recognizing you probably don't deal with that on a routine basis. It is, at the moment, a six-county regional organization in Northwest Indiana. We will soon cover seven, which means that we cover the exact same area that Linda and her group does. We are committed to jobs in the environment. It is all about trying to grow the number of jobs, whether it's bringing new companies into this area, whether it's keeping what we have and having them grow, or whether it's supporting the entrepreneur in a way that allows them to grow their brand new business, their smaller business, a source of tremendous growth. And I think so many times as we talk about what might be ahead of us and what kind of opportunities exist in, in the business world, kind of the employment opportunities, we perhaps ought to take a look and say, what is really going on around us? There was a study done last year. And if you look simply at Northwest Indiana, which of course is where the study was focused, you will see that it's about $41 billion in sales in this area. It's a big number. And that's an important part of the economy of this entire state and of this entire nation. What I'd like you to take a look at, though, as you look at these different sectors, the different slices that make this up, think in your own minds the level of academic achievement necessary to get jobs in any one of those particular arenas. And I'd, let me just pick healthcare, which is one that we probably all have some familiarity with. We all recognize that you do, in fact, need to have medical doctors. A lot of advanced education, years and years and years of training, both in a, in a classroom as well as in a, in a medical setting, after they've left high school. We understand that. 
but then think about the number of technicians that are needed. One of the most rapidly growing areas in the world of healthcare. Think about the home healthcare specialists. Think about the nursing staffs, all of which can be very effectively accomplished with two-year programs at a community college or another institution. There are some great opportunities out there for students, no matter what their desires might be. And I'd like to talk about that a little bit more as we go forward. Again, recognizing that Northwest Indiana is $41 billion, how does that kind of fit in with sort of the rest of the world? If you look at the state of Indiana, you can see how much larger the economy is. And frankly, if you simply look at Chicagoland, and that's a very, very large dynamic, it's probably the, at worst, the third largest economic driver in the entire nation, making it about one of the eighth or ninth largest in the world. Look at the size of that economy and what it does in the way of sales in a one-year period. Well, these are some things that employers typically look at as they're thinking about the business decisions, whether they want to add a job, whether they want to try to grow things. And I want to just take a, a quick look at them. These are very common in the world in which I work, trying to create new jobs in an area. There's a number of things that you would expect to see up there that we're simply not going to talk about this morning. Certainly the kind of business climate that they're in. Are, are my customers here? Are they going to be buying more of my product? All of those kinds of issues are a big part of it. There's also, of course, the issue of, of, I'll call it quality of life, the attractiveness. Do we have nice homes? Do we have things where I myself and the employees that work in a company can do something with that period of time that they're not at the workplace? What do we do with all of those issues? And you all recognize that education is a part of that quality of life. However, I'm gonna talk about that more in the workforce arena. Clearly the infrastructure, our geographic advantages is huge. I simply wanted to touch on that for one quick minute. And if you look at this picture, this slide, you will see that everything needed to conduct commerce is available in the Midwest, here in Northwest Indiana, in the state of Indiana, and in all of the states that surround the state of Indiana. We have it all. We have interstate highways. We have international ports. We have availability to rail. We have commuter rail systems. We have fiber optics. We have airports. All of the pieces that you would want for commerce are here. Certainly there's work to be done, but the pieces are here. Bringing us to what you all are really needing to focus on and what we would love to work with you in, where it makes sense and in ways that, that support your work. And that's how do we develop the workforce of the future. And I'd like to take a quick look and just ask you a couple of questions. And they're on the slide in front of you. Can you name for me one industry that has reduced in the past 20 years its workforce by two thirds? It's increased its output by one third. Throughout that entire period of time, it's improved the quality of its product dramatically. And it offers far more opportunities, availabilities, and types of products to its customers today than they ever did in the past. What's that industry called? I think we'd all call it steel. It's how we make one of the basic products that drives the American economy. And that also gives you some insights into the workforce needs that we're facing as we go forward. You've probably all seen these kinds of, of numbers before. And again, what I'm driving at is it's a reflection of the reality of today's workforce. Look at the unemployment rates for those with less educational attainment versus those with more educational attainment. And I think we all recognize that the kinds of jobs that exist for people with lower levels of academic achievement are simply not there and they certainly don't pay the kind of dollars necessary for an American lifestyle, at least in many, many cases. You can look forward and take a look again and say what kinds of things are out there. This chart is very reflective of where employers see the world heading. And again, if you take a look in the change category, kind of look over on the, the percentage numbers, probably the easiest way to look at it right in through here, just look down that. And you'll see that in some cases the change is a negative. And that tends to be those with lesser academic achievement lesser skills requirement in the job, those jobs are simply not there, and again, they certainly don't pay the way that, that any of us would like to see Americans live their lifestyle. And as you go down that scale, more and more and more job opportunities will exist going into the future. 
And I do think those job opportunities are going to be there. Here are a couple of recent examples in northwest Indiana. These are replicated across the state of Indiana and again throughout the Midwestern region. If you simply take a look at the kinds of investments that are being made by employers, these happen to be new companies coming into the region. Look at the number of jobs. Look at the number of dollars going into building their facilities and recognize that each and every one of these companies is going to be employing individuals in the somewhere north above $20 an hour or $40,000 a year category. And that's for the entry level, the lowest paid individual working in these companies. But to get there, they do have to have almost across the board a minimum of a two-year college education, a vocational school, or a particular certificate. Uh, let me give you one quick example. You'll see here listed Fronius in Portage. Part of the effort to, to interest them in locating their U.S. headquarters here was to assure that they could get the workforce they needed. And we were able to work with Ivy Tech Community College, the vocational school here in this region and in this state, and they literally had to agree to create, and they did, create five separate classes that will allow Fronius to have the workforce that they need. That flexibility exists here in Indiana. You all are the keys to getting there. I can't really begin to tell you how it is that you can develop the work skills that we need. All I can do is tell you sort of what the goal is. What is it that we need students coming out of high school prepared to do? Whether they continue on into further educational endeavors, whether they move into the workforce, or whether they do a combination of those two, more and more common in our world today. Well, again, thank you very much. It's great to be here. I really appreciate the commitment that you all have to your roles as professional educators, to the, the kids that you work with in your schools, and frankly, to really driving the economy in this region by making sure that we have strong, qualified, and capable workers as we go into the future. Thanks. Have a great couple of days.